In 2003, Lynn Walker was a student in an oral history class interviewing World War II vets. Later, she worked as a staffer for Voices, helping produce the project's best-selling book and creating a photo exhibit about Latinos and World War II with a grant from Humanities Texas. It's still in circulation today. Then she taught high school in Round Rock and found another use for interviews with World War II generation Latinos. She played some for her students. The very first time I showed a couple clips, uh, the classroom was silent and I was amazed that some of the students uh, that normally aren't really involved in the classroom really cared. They asked questions, they wanted to see another one. And so for the first time, I had student involvement for these primary documents, these primary sources, and they reminded them of people they knew. Once the Voces interviews are videotaped, they become raw material for many other uses. Voces is always looking for ways to disseminate the interviews, photographs, and stories. So you'll find Voces materials in all kinds of places. Of course, the Voces website is the easiest way to find information about its interviews. And the project is putting the entire indexed interviews online, making it easier for teachers and others to access them. But to see the entire interviews and other documentation, you need to go to the world-famous Nettie Lee Benson Latin American Collection. Carla Alvarez is the head archivist who works most closely with Voces, making sure the interviews are processed properly so that nothing is lost and everything is accounted for. The Nettie Lee Benson Latin American Collection documents the experiences of U.S. Latinos and Voces oral history projects are an important part of the archival holdings at the Nettie Lee Benson Collection because U.S. Latina, Latino, Latinx history is U.S. American history. Of course, Voces is constantly using those interviews in research. It has produced five books on the Latino World War II experience. It also publishes an annual journal to promote the use of oral history in the study of the Latino perspective in the United States. Students have produced several short documentaries from the existing interviews. We've been working on podcasts on different parts of the Latino story. But outside of Voces, creative people take notice. For instance, in 2006, a playwright in Phoenix wrote a play about the Latino World War II experience creating composite characters from actual people. Two other plays have used Voces interviews as well. Voces interviews have been used on others' websites as in George Mason University's History Matters. In 2018, Voces partnered with Google to create a beautiful online display. The project's photographs are resources for posters and flyers. And of course, Documentarians know to look to Voces for its vast collection of over 10,000 digitized photographs. But in 2007, documentary filmmaker Ken Burns didn't seek out the Voces resources. Burns and PBS faced protests across the country. PBS, the public broadcasting service, has come under unfriendly fire from Latino war vets and their familias. The taxpayer-supported nonprofit organization has approved and funded a documentary about World War II that absolutely excludes any mention at all of Latino sacrifices for the U.S. war effort. Finally, he made some concessions. And Voces has been told that PBS greenlighted documentaries about Latinos and other minorities in the wake of the protests. Voces interviews and photos have been used for several newspaper, magazine, television, and radio stories. In the summer of 2019, Voces interviews were used in an augmented reality installation in Austin. An AR installation is not something Voces staff would have conceived of two decades ago. And in the future, Voces materials will be used in ways that we can't possibly anticipate, says Ryan Lynch, the head of Special Collections at the Benson. 50 years from now or 20 years from now. So it will become an increasingly important record. You know, it really will at some point become a, a pretty incredible corpus. And there is another value to Voces interviews and photographs. It inspires others to look more closely at their communities, at their neighbors and themselves. 
That inspiration is harder to quantify, but it is very much one of the best and most important things that Vosses does.